most of the studies now that they've done shows that, that you know, eating a ketogenic diet is completely appropriate still. Um, you know, even, even at high levels of intensity, you can still be a fat burner. Like I, I do a race called Loaded Jaw. You know, the first 100 miles of the race, you know, uh, because everybody else that I'm racing with is, is just, lo loaded. Yeah, just loaded up on carbs, I actually have a little bit of trouble keeping up with them initially because they're at a higher level. When I, when I, I mean, I've got to stay down on my 70, 80% matched heart rate. I can't go above that. You know, I, I try to stay there. Um, and so at the halfway mark, at the 100-mile mark, I'm a little bit fatigued, you know, because they're, they're hammering it up these hills. For the next 100 miles, they're all drafting off me the rest of the way because I'm just getting warmed up, right? Now, now, now that's, that's my time. Yeah, that, yeah, they're, yeah, they're behind me drafting the whole way because I'm just getting, my metabolism is just starting to really start to get fine tuned. And so, and then at the 100 mile mark, I'll have like a hamburger or I'll have some carbs, you know, like some fruit. And that's just like turbo boost, man. It's like, Poof! because now I'm ready to go. Yeah, and a lot of my clients will kind of, a lot of them will naturally kind of transition over to like a paleo type type of lifestyle long term. They'll add more fruit to their diet as they go, um, which I think is fine. I don't like paleo to, in terms of, if, if you're looking to, to fix the metabolic dysfunction, paleo is not the way to go. Right. It's not. Mediterranean is not the way to go. It's just not, right? There's mm -hmm. too much sugar involved, too many carbs. Right. And remember, carb is a carb is a carb. I mean, right. whatever it is, it's all sugar, right? And, and right. the body's gonna respond, insulin's gonna respond. If insulin's elevated, it's bad, right? And so, um, so those diets are not good to fix the problem. But once you fix a problem, you know, I have no problem with my clients doing a little bit. In fact, you know, really, I really eat a strict keto diet from about November to about May. But once May, March hits, I'm eating fruit. You know, when it's in season, you know, I'm eating it, you know. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting. My clients are, you know, after, after the holiday's been over, they're, they're really seeing a lot of success right now. In fact, typically my clients see the most success from about December to about April, May. And I can't, I can't help believe, but believe that it's just a natural process. The body said, hey, listen, it's winter time. We need to start burning fat. I mean, I love fruit. I don't ever drink it. You know, I eat it, you know, fresh. Right. Uh, but I love corn on the cob, like crazy, man. So I'm having corn on the cob when it's fresh. I mean, it's fresh, but I'm eating it, man. Lots of butter on it, so it's a little bit keto, but, uh, but you know, and some of my clients, that want to add a little more carbs. Some of my clients will eat 50 to 100 grams of carbs a day, mm. right? And uh, that's still considered low carb, but they'll eat, you know, sweet potatoes and some other things, you know, as part of that, add a little more fruit into their diet. So, you know, if I've got an athlete that wants to lift, they're gonna eat 100 grams of carbs a day. Yeah. They don't need to eat 25, right? Yeah. But if, if you're metabolically sick and type two diabetic, you're not eating 100 grams of carbs a day. Right. That's not happening. Right. Yeah, you gotta get under 20 or you're not gonna get better. Yeah. Eat it and summarized easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.